Yay! Hello everybody, I'm CMath, and I'm going to start doing streams every week and um, talking about academics, school, college, things that I'm learning, research, books, all that kind of stuff. Um, because uh, I, I kind of have so much to talk about and things that I'm always learning and I like sharing it with others. And I tried like making videos on TikTok and it just takes me forever to actually make a video like it's just been one thing after another and I just I just haven't developed the habits of like doing it really quickly and like just making it like right then and there so I just like have all these like things all these like unfinished projects on like my phone and my computer and stuff and it's just not working out for me and it's making me depressed so I figure if I just do it live I, I always take notes and I'm always like kind of ahead on that I'm really much better at writing than I am speaking and that's another reason why I want to do these lives because I want to get better at speaking so um today I'm just going to be talking about school um, which started recently um, but I wanted to start off with saying that uh, I'm going to do to do flip. hopefully I did the inputs correctly and you're seeing OSU um I'm going to OSU and I'm taking online classes and I'm going for a bachelor's degree in science and my major is sustainable horticulture and I also want to add um, ecological restoration to that um, but I want to talk about why I'm like going back to school at 30 well, I'm 34, but I like kind of started going back like a couple of years ago. But um, after I got out of high school, I like immediately went into community college, and that was like in 2008. And so I went for like a couple years, but I didn't even get my associates before I dropped out in like 2010. Yeah. So um, then a lot of things happened, and life things, and I did all kinds of things and had fun. But um, back in 2019, uh, I wanted to go back to school because I like kind of was like talking to my into my my guides and uh, consulting with my intuition and trying to figure out you know what I was going to do next like you know what do I have to be doing now and I decided that I wanted to go back to school because um, uh, I want to have a self sustainable community that's what I've always wanted. Um, aside from wanting to be a hermit, that was like the first thing that I always wanted, but then I realized um, being in a community and having and being with people is really important for learning, for growth, and I mean that's why we're here on earth, we're not here to be alone, so. Um, back in 2019, I was in California, and I decided I didn't want to go back to school, so I went to a community college in California, and if there's one thing that I was like certain about is that I did not want to do a program. Like I did not want to go to a university. I just wanted to like maybe take some classes that were relevant to what I wanted to do, but I didn't want to get suckered into like a program because there's always like so many extra things that you don't need or I thought I didn't need. So um, I was trying to avoid that. But then halfway through the semester, I like took like a greenhouse class. I took some classes on horticulture, some beginning classes. Like halfway through the semester, I realized like how much I've always loved studying and how much I've always loved learning, uh, especially when it's subjects that I'm really interested in. And that I kind of just only dropped out um, of community college back in the day because I was just bored of all the core classes like all like I was terrible at mathematics and sciences so I just like I was terrible with that stuff and I didn't I didn't want to have anything to do with it I didn't think it had anything to do with what I wanted to do um but I'm also really glad that I took them because it also made it easy for me to like get into the university um get into OSU um Oregon State University um, and, you know, it canceled out a lot of classes, I, so I didn't have to take a lot of the mathematics and sciences because I already took that, so that was awesome. Um, but um, in 2019, when I, you know, after I went back to school and I was like, alright, I think I want to go to a university. So um, I was looking around for universities that I thought I would like, and I'm trying to have a focus on growing food. Um, 
particularly like fruit and stuff um so I was like looking around and I was like well I should probably look at also look at a state that I want to like be at long term so I was like looking around at all the states in the United States like okay well it's gotta like have a really awesome hippie community and agrarian community so I was like looking at all the places like North Carolina and Colorado and I just didn't know where I wanted to go but then like Oregon kind of popped up when I was looking for colleges I'm like okay so I like looked at the climate and I looked at everything it had to have water because like essentially I wanted to like live in a state that's going to like provide my needs provide like all the basic needs um for like a homestead for like a self-sustainable community and um yeah I settled on Oregon because um it reminded me of Ireland I like visited Ireland for like a couple weeks like back in 2017 and it was beautiful and I was trying to find like a place in the United States that kind of replicated that that environment and Oregon is like kind of where I settled on and there's like an, there's awesome there's awesome agrarian communities in Oregon and uh, as well as just like kind of like hippie communities and starseed communities and new age communities that kind of thing so I'm into that so um but it, it, it kind of buckled down to, like, the college was, the university is actually a really awesome university. It, has, it focuses a lot on sciences and um, had horticulture, which is the cult study of, of cultivating plants, crops particularly, um, and that's what I want to do. Um, so they have an awesome, like, selection there. So I settled on Oregon, and then in 2020... Um, I uh, moved to Oregon, like, at the beginning of 2020, um, and then I went to college at about, wait, yes, because, yeah, 2020 was the year, no, 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 okay, so 2020 was the year of the rat, I remember, because um, right before that, like, like, COVID had started, like, peeking its little ugly head out in China, and then, like, it was, like, starting to spread that year of 2020 so I remember that and then um but that year that's when I went to community college that year in the fall and then I then I moved to Oregon later um that year at the at the beginning of next year in 2021 and uh then fall classes started that year at OSU and I I went to OSU uh in at the the end of 2021 so um yeah that's how I got to Oregon and um so I've been living in Oregon for a couple years now and uh, since then I've taken a bunch of classes um and then so like right now I have a GPA of 3.4 um and I am considered a senior because I have over 135 credits in higher education and as it is now I have 171 credits um the minimum for my degree is 180 but i do not have all the credentials met yet most of my um core the m most of my bachelorette core like is complete like i only have like one class and i have to take that in person and i'm not ready to take classes in person i kind of like the flexibility of online classes and i still want to pursue a minor in natural resources which is going to also set me up for that ecological restoration um bachelor's do a bachelor's degree in science a like a major in ecological restoration so um that will have some of the classes for that degree so let me like look at the rest of my notes So with the classes that I have to take from my major and the option for my major plus the minor in natural resources and every, everything that I want to take, um, I still have a significant amount of classes to take. Yeah, I think like another two years and I should have my degree in horticulture and minor in natural resources, but I'm certainly taking my time, financial aid and everything like that. Like I had to, I had to live in Oregon for a year to actually qualify for in-state tuition. So, like, that was, like, a really, like, I, I got in there really slick. Like, it, like, I was, like, just on the cusp. And I was able to make it in fall semester. So, 
Um, yeah, so that's where I'm at with that. Ugh, let me take a sip of this. Right. So yeah, I still have a couple years for the horticulture major. Um, and again, I also want to major in ecological restoration. But for now, um, I recently... I did take summer classes, um, I'm pointing that way, but, like, as if summer is in that direction, but, um, yes, summer classes. In the past, I did propaganda and social control, which I really enjoyed that class, and I had so many notes of, like, so many videos that I wanted to make, so in future conversations and in, in future, like, live streams, I'll have to, like, go back over some of my notes and talk about that class because it was super informative, super fun to do. I like my major project was um, we had to do a case study and I chose my case study was um, on that one documentary called Game Changers. It was a vegan documentary. So I, I did my case study on that and it was like a nine page case study. Oh, it, was, it, was, it was rough, um, but it was really good and it helped me like really look at things in a fair way and um like in a yeah in a fair and justified way so that you know no matter what side you on doesn't matter like it's important to like be just and be fair and ask all the questions so like that that class like really helped me be more um unbiased <laughs> we can say that yeah so it was a very useful class so um, I did, so I did propaganda and social control, and I also did managing natural resources for the future. That was also a helpful class, um, and that actually was a hybrid class, so it went really fast, so I, like, finished that fairly early in summer, but, um, but that's, that's over and done with now, and now we're in fall semester, which started, like, yesterday? Yeah, it started on Wednesday, and today is Thursday. So, um, fall semester started on Wednesday, and, um, I'm doing chemistry, 122. It's general chemistry. I did the first chemistry, like, I think, actually, at the beginning of this year. Yeah, <laughs> so, like, in the winter semester of, of this, this year, I did my first chemistry, and then I just kind of skipped because, like, I was actually in Florida for, like, the first six months of this year. So, um kind of set me back a little bit. I was, like, taking care of my mom and everything, so, um, so I only took, like, one or two classes, like, at the beginning of the year, but, um, now I'm back, uh, doing chemistry again. Um, I got an A in chemistry at the beginning of the year. That was really tough, though. Like, it took a lot of, it took a lot of studying. I had to, like, go through, um, tutoring and everything, uh, because I've just never been very good at, like, mathematics and, um, chemistry and stuff like that so um but they actually make it pretty easy nowadays with online classes and like with the modules and everything and you know you can go at your own pace and make your own schedule so it actually it feels less stressful but um anyways this semester doing uh chemistry 122 just general chemistry and that's five credits and then i'm taking entomology course which is Intro to Pest Management, and I have to take that. I don't have a choice, unfortunately. I have to take um, Pest Management for my degree in Horticulture. Um, that, so that's for my major. Those are my ma That's part of my major requirements. Um, and I'm not super, like, excited. Like, I wasn't excited about it, but, like, um, after, like, watching the teacher, like, she made, like, a video and everything, so after watching the teacher, she seems really awesome, and there's a lot of focus on, like, bug identification like I think bugs are really important I think insects and pests in general are important because they're a part of the ecological stability of our world so they are absolutely important so it seems like that's going to be what a, what a, uh, the first half of the class is so I'm definitely happy about that I'm not happy about like anything that might talk about like using agrochemicals on them um or anything any unsustainable mess uh any unsustainable um, uh, methods for controlling pests. So I'm not into that, but um, we'll see. 
Um, we'll see what it is. She seems really nice, though. Um, but it is a four credit class, um, and there will be assignments and projects that I'll have to be starting soon. Um, we are actually starting with iNaturalist. Um, that's part of the lab that we have to do. So I already started kind of documenting some insects in my area, but like winter is coming, well, fall is here, so <clears throat> a lot of insects are like. Like hibernating or going away or whatever they do during the colder um, times of the year so um, yeah so they're harder to find and like all the bugs that are out and about are like flying around and really hard to like catch a picture of so oh but I think I'm gonna enjoy this class um, and then I have to do a, a weed management class. This one is, is actually organic weed management. And I was lucky that I, I could like sub it in because I had to take a weed management class. Um, but I had the option to do organic weed management, which I chose instead. So even if they talk about agrochemicals and unsustainable ways to control weeds, um, at least it's organic. So at least it's a step up in the right direction. But... I'm not in, I, I do, uh, there are some classes, like, for my degree that, like, I don't want, and actually one of them, um, let me go over this way, boop, okay, so hopefully you can see that, um, this is, like, my schedule for the next year, like, so here it is, general chemistry, insect pest management, weed management, that's what I'm doing for the fall semester, this semester, which has already started. Um, and this is what I'm going to do, like, for the next year. So for 2024, we have, like, pr um, this is, like, this precision agriculture. This is what I'm not excited about doing. Um, so if we go, like, in here, I'm going to tr try to find it. Come on. So we go into the catalog of OSU, programs, colleges, courses. Yes. So if I go to horticulture, H... Is it 414H? There. Precision Agriculture provides insight into technology available to support precision agriculture and data management planning applications, examines the concept and applications of precision agriculture to teach practical use of hardware, equipment, and software, an overview of current technology, including autonomous vehicles, GPS, soil, and crop. So, like, all of this could be useful maybe in like my ecological restoration class if we're like going over certain areas of land and we just need to um kind of just like look over the landscape and everything for whatever uh, reason i mean imagery mapping this might be useful in this in this way um but this generally i feel uh, this is what i'm afraid of is like it's mostly going to be for like large-scale agricultural operations which i'm completely against we should like large-scale agricultural operations are horrible for our planet our environment um for everything it's just terrible we shouldn't have that we should have small scale agricultural systems or like permaculture gardens and such so um so it's like times like these where like these classes on um, like kind of get a little depressed about because I have to take them. Um, I have to take this this class particularly for the option that I have in horticulture. My horticulture option is sustainable horticulture. And for some reason, I mean like technology is important. It can, it can really like help um, when doing agriculture and making things easier and more convenient for everybody. But um, what is unsustainable is large scale agricultural operations. So if like you know, that's the only thing that this particularly would be used in. It's a pretty worthless class for me, so. I am not really excited about that. <laughs> um. Oh, but. Can we see that still? Okay, we can. So, um. So, besides precision agriculture. Plant pathology, I think I'm going to really enjoy. Um, and I've chosen American Sign Language because I love learning languages. Um, I only know English, though, unfortunately. Like, I just, 
like most of the things in my life that I'm interested in, like, I'll focus on it for a time, and then I get bored and want to focus on something new, so, like, I have, like, briefly studied, like, multiple languages, but I'm not fluent in any of them, um, but it's just so much fun to, like, pick up a new language and start learning about that stuff, so, um, they didn't have American Sign Language on, like, OSU for a while, so it just kind of, like, popped up, and I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta take it, and so this is the time that they had it for, and that's the winter and spring semester of 2024, so I'm like, well, this is my opportunity, so I'm gonna do it, like, um, I could be taking other classes, um, in those slots, but, um, I don't know, American Sign Language just seems like it'd be so much fun, like, it's, like, I've, I've learned, I've, like, studied Spanish, and I've studied Finnish and German, Um, and, I mean, I have interest in a lot of other languages, but, like, those are the ones I've spent a lot of time on, and I've started to do Russian. They don't, they have Russian listed on the site, but, like American Sign Language, it's, like, not something that's, like, I guess, popular, so, like, it's not something that they have to choose from every year. So, I'm gonna keep my eyes open for Russian, maybe it'll, like, come up in the future, or maybe I'll just, like, take it out of community college, because it'll be cheaper. But they have American Sign Language up, so I'm gonna be taking that next year. Um, yeah, and then I'll finish my chemistry after that, um, and then Applied Ecology and Managed Ecosystems, I think I'm gonna like that too. And then Intro to Entrepreneurship, I would've liked to do that sooner, but, um, there it is, and... Uh, that's a part of my, I think that's uh, a part of my, um, not my major, but my option in horticulture for the sustainable horticulture. It's like a, a chosen, it's something that I could choose. So I chose that one. It is either that or nonprofit. Um, but that one seems like, this one seems like it'll like be a lot more useful to me at this point in my life. Plant physiology, I think I'll like that too. And then, of course, ecological restoration I'm looking forward to. So I'm just going to, like, end with that as far as class plans because, like, yeah, I don't, like, things change. Like, every year I, like, move things around and play musical chairs with all of them because, like, you know, there are some some times where I can only take certain classes, so I have to, like, work around those. And then there are other classes that don't come around every year and so I have to like sometimes like fit them in if they like show up one year and yeah so there's that all right moving along I'm so happy to finally like be talking about this I love school and studying and learning so um what do I think about the education system um I've always like I've always, like, not trusted the education system. Um, There's a lot of corruption. There's a lot of, you know, like, who makes the rules on what is what we should be learning? Well, like, we have to remember that we have institutions and industries that, like, have a lot to lose if we learned about their improper practices, if we learned that they weren't necessary to have in our world. Um... So naturally, um, it's so weird. Um, so I've had classes that I've taken that condemn tillage that are like, no, the tillage is really bad for the soil. It, um, destroys soil aggregation, soil ecosystems and organisms. And that's the whole reason why we use agrochemicals. We just deplete the soil through all these terrible tilling practices and all these heavy machinery running over the soil. Um, it just creates all of these problems. And yet... They're also still saying, oh, well, you know, but we need it because there isn't another option. And it's true, like, we don't really have a lot of convenient options. There are options, though. Like, we can be doing better agricultural practices. Like, there, those options are out there, but they're just costly. And they're costly because, you know, our whole system runs around, like, this capitalist ideology and the supply and demand and the fact that a lot of Americans particularly are very uneducated. So we have like this, this big, how do I explain it? Um, we, we just have a lot of a lack of education in our world. And that lack of education is what gives all these industries all this power over us. So they like kind of control our 
ideas like oh you know this is the only thing that we can do we're doing our best like you know and then they use they use fancy words and marketing like I mean my th let's see the first thing that comes to mind is like cage free or something like that plant based like they just like use these marketing ploys to like get people to buy their products um but there's really nothing to it like um so that's just like circling back to like the education system like there are industries that just have money in it they they just come in and they're like oh you're like you need to teach them this you need to teach them this this and that so we have like unsustainable agricultural systems that are taught in the school and yet there are also like um things that are taught in school that like disagrees with those systems that contradicts those systems so it's like so it's such a whiplash like so I like take one class and they're like teaching this but they're also like oh yeah but you know like we're also doing it this way and this is how you can do it sort of sustainably so it's like such a confusing like back and forth um and so you can tell like that conflict that conflict between um like knowledge and sustainability and like justice and then um like money profiteering marketing industrial control so um and people just have to like we just need more education we need people to like be aware of that um so that we can make real change um but anyways the educational system i never really liked it and that's probably why i dropped out so early um i just didn't didn't agree I didn't I didn't think like it was a uh, it was in my best interest to do it it was just like this mind control like um brainwashing and as if I wasn't really actually learning anything but now that I'm back in college um there is a lot like if once you learn how to like sift through the bias you can learn a lot and then you can create those conversations and like the discussion boards online and everything and then um, people are questioning stuff and there's a lot of people like that I'm that are in my classes and stuff they're like we're on the same page um, but there's like a lot of you know confusion about certain practices especially in the agricultural field of study um, so let me see my water Okay, so what do I want to do with my degrees for the future? So I have so, I'm such an Aries. I have I have so many projects um, and so many ideas that I'd be happy with. Um, generally, I just want to know how to be self sustainable and how to um, have a self sustainable community that is in harmony with. The environment and the planet and since going back to school I've learned so much um, particularly about ecology and how everything because ecology is like the study of like how everything is interconnected how like that all organisms in on the planet are interconnected so when something happens in one part of the world it can affect things on the other side of the world like maybe not right away but over time like if 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 things continue to increase you know, like we have, we have issues over here, we have issues over there. So that's like how, you know, we can explain like if, if one species of insect, you know, declines, like what a big impact it makes on other species that depend on that insect for pollination, for, um, for food sources, um, even reproduction, which was pollination. Well, if we, if we were talking about that 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 can go in a lot of different ways. So, um, anyways, uh, I don't think a lot of people understand this. So people laugh at people when <laughs> when they're talking about you know like, you know, there's decline in this insect population or this species, and people are like, who cares? Because they don't understand like um, what an incredible domino effect can have on the rest of the ecology of the planet. And I think because we have that disconnect, we have so many people in the dark about like their incredibly negative impacts on our world. So um, what do I want to do with my degree? I just kind of want to have a self-sustainable community um, that's also like an education site. I want to have like uh, education gardens and also like 
beautiful gardens. Like, I definitely want it to be, like, a beautiful paradise and, like, just gorgeous gardens and fun things to, like, explore and, like, maybe inspirational, like, signs and artwork here and there. Um, but also an education center, educational spaces to teach people about ecology, to teach people about the environment and the locality um, of wherever I would be planting my roots and whatnot and you know teaching people how to be self-sustainable and how to how, have to how to develop self-sustainable um, practices and stick with them particularly agriculturally but there's plenty of other ways that we can be self-sustainable and um, I want to focus on that um, I also would like to grow fruit like I want to have permaculture gardens I also want to like grow fruit that I can like sell to other people um, particularly fruit, um, because I believe fruit is like the far, far most, the, the primary food source of humans. Humans should be eating fruit primarily every day. Um, and so I want to, I want to grow a lot of like fruit bearing crops, trees, shrubs, and perennials are so much more sustainable as, as a crop, um, than any other, uh, like annuals, no, like annuals like take up so much, so many resources. And of course, animal agriculture is insufficient and unnecessary. So, um, so we have like a lot of wasted resources in the world, but, um, that's what I want to do with my degree. Self-sustainable community, educational community, um, just a safe space for learning and growing and peace and prosperity. So that's what I want to do. Um, See what other notes do I have? Okay. I had the question of what I hope for humanity. Which I think I think what I was saying was like, you know, what I where I hope like this will go in the future. I hope that humans will educate themselves and, and their minds will continue to open so that we can have a more sustainable world. Um, and that kind of starts with like individual habits and um, just learning things little by little, like baby steps go such a long way. Like when people put too much on their plate, they just get overwhelmed and throw their hands up in the air and just quit. Um, so like little baby steps here and there. So um, I hope for what I hope for humanity is that um, people will continue to like keep waking up to sustainable practices and we can transition from unsustainable practices to sustainable practices agriculturally um, just everything that we do that involves our planet like humans shouldn't live so close together like we need sustainable housing sustainable food production um, yeah, and a sustainable population. <laughs> but, like, um, I, I'm not as educated in, in that kind of science as I was, would like to be. So I don't, I don't really understand, uh, like, the cutoff point for, the hu for human numbers. But um, it seems as of recently there's um, a lot of depopulation going on. So, but I don't know if, if that's even really going to help as much. Um, there is a lot of people in this world and it stresses out our resources a lot. And, you know, America particularly is very wasteful. Um, a lot of the things that are produced in America, um, like food-wise in food production, um, we produce so much more than what our population can, like, needs. So, like, and that just goes to other countries that all, like, pot, that pay, like, top dollar for it. So we buy, like, really cheap foods from, like, Mexico in Ecuador and other countries and then we just ship off all of ours and raise the price. It doesn't make sense. It's not environmentally friendly. Like we should be eating the things that are grown locally. Um, that's the best uh, for the planet in so many ways. And for our health as well, we should be eating things that are close to home. So we don't have to worry about agrochemicals. We don't have to worry about all these preservatives for like foods and such. Um, but, you know, I, I, see, I see the world waking up to that. You know, there's a lot of small farms um, that have been coming out over the years and the prepper community has increased. So we have people who are thinking about the future, who are thinking about sustainability. Um, 
which is nice. So, um, anyways, I think that's all I wanted to talk about involving school. Let's see what my notes are. So, yeah, um, I would like to do this, like, every week and talk about school, college, all my favorite subjects, things that I'm learning, things that I'm reading, because I have so much, and I'm very mentally active, so I'm, like, it's my favorite thing to do is just, like, absorb information. So, um, I love to learn, and I want to talk about this book now. So, this book is called, um... Healing Lime um, by Stephen Harrod Booner. Yeah, Natural Healing of Lyme bore, uh, Boreliosis and the Co-Infections. Da, da 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 It just, it, like, I was mostly in it for the Lyme, but apparently there's, like, a lot of connections with the bacteria to other diseases. So, um... I, I wanted to start reading this. This is like a book that like my my landlord um, let me borrow because uh, I took I ha I took a bunch of tests and I hope to like go over them in the future because I think it's really interesting and it's one of the subjects I've just been diving into the last couple years is like health related subjects. So um, I went when I went to Florida at the beginning of this year for like six months. I had the opportunity to take a bunch of health tests, and one of them was um, a test to test what co what Lyme co-infections I had, because um, apparently a lot of people have Lyme. I didn't know that, but uh, so yeah. Now we're gonna now we're switching over from like school to like Lyme. <laughs> so um, one sec. I don't talk very often, so, like, my throat is already getting scratchy. But, um, so, like, this was my test. And I was tested for, like, 14 different Lyme co-infections. So, I have, Burgo okay, so I'm going to try to pronounce these. I have Bartonella hensilea, um, Borrelia recurrentis, uh, Ehrlichia schaefensis, Bergdorferi, and I have like two kinds of Bergdorferi, A and B, I don't know, I don't quite understand, but um, I have five. Probably can't read that, but anyways, there's like five different co-infections of Lyme that I have, so what I learned, I mean, I've, I've had people tell me all sorts of things, that Lyme was like some kind of conspiracy, or some kind of thing that was, like, released by the U.S. government as a bioweapon, and it just kind of blah, 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 blah. Anyways, what I learned from this book was that Lyme um, was kind of, it got its name from, like, I think Lyme, Connecticut? One of those, one of those up there states, but um, apparently Lyme came, uh, Lyme was, is, a, is supposedly they're a bacteria. They, like, Originally, scientists didn't know how to classify them because they're, like, quite in intelligent. But they ended up just going with bacteria. So, apparently, Lyme is a bacteria. Um, and I don't want to get too far ahead. Like, I already, like, started going off. Okay. So, Lyme disease can be transferred from humans via ticks, but it can also, like get transferred from other insects like mosquitoes and fleas. So that's something that I learned from this book. Um, Lyme disease is, is kind of like an umbrella term for hundreds of different kinds of bacteria that cause different symptoms and attack different parts of the body, yet they're all considered Lyme. Lyme and co-infections of Lyme, like they're just like kind of like the same bacteria, but like maybe just different strains, something like that. Um, and the author, he talks about how he, like, believes that these bacteria are, like, quite intelligent. And that, um, they're intelligent because they adapt to their host very, very easily. Um, so, like, whenever they, like, are introduced to a new host, they, like, uh, they just immediately adapt to that host. And it's, like, it, very exceptional in, um, in, in, in uh, in, 
in a s nature how quickly they, they can do this. So, certain, certain types of Lyme co-infections, um, they prefer certain parts of the body. So if you have like, a, a, if you have one of the bacteria, one of the strains that favors joints, for, for example, then those, that bacteria, once it enters the body, it's going to look for those joints. It's going to go straight for those joints. And then uh, when it finds it, it's going to create like a biofilm to protect itself, to hide from the immune system. And that is essentially like, you know, that then it creates like joint issues. It can create arthritis, for example. Um, doesn't mean that all arthritis is a, a symptom of having Lyme, just that Lyme can Lyme can create this symptom. So like another thing that I learned is that disease is just a collection of symptoms, which blew my mind, um, and maybe it'll blow yours too, too, because, like, I mean, we think of disease as, like, it's, like, this thing that, you know, this elusive thing that's hard to get rid of, but um, after reading this book, I realized, you know, like, the way that he explained it is that um, disease is just a collection of symptoms, so um, it's not the origin. So if Lyme, for example, was the origin of these collection of symptoms, then you would need to treat Lyme in order to free yourself of these symptoms of arthritis, for example. So um, I thought that was really interesting, and it actually made me feel more comfortable with the word disease. Like, it wasn't as elusive as, like, we originally thought. Now, there's a lot of things that our scientists, that even the, the best experts and scientists in, in our, on our world, um, still don't know, but there's a lot of things that we do know, and that's another thing that I kind of came to realization reading this book. So, um, so yes, the bacteria adapt to their host, certain strains prefer certain parts of the body and move to that location, so, like, there are plenty of locations, like, the brain, like, if, if, the, if certain co-infections prefer the brain, you'll have neurological issues. The joints, you'll have joint issues. The heart, you'll have heart issues. Um, the, the things that we have in our world today that people are suffering from could potentially be because of Lyme. And, it may, and Lyme just may also just be exacerate, exasperating the condition. Like, if there's one thing we can be certain of, Lyme isn't good to have in our bodies. And um, what it does is it depletes our immune system over time. So the longer that it goes untreated and ignored, you know, the worse that these symptoms are going to get. And then you'll develop chronic issues. So the, these bacteria can cause a large range of symptoms of diseases and disorders, some of which we call cancer, Alzheimer's disease, arthritis, schizophrenia, the list goes on. Um, neurological disorders are the most common um, with Lyme co-infections, at least that's what he says in the book, um, so a lot of neurological issues with that. Um, co-infections are multiple strains of Lyme infecting the host. Whew. So, let's see if I wrote any notes about that. Right, so... What I understand about Lyme and its co-infections are that they form biofilms. So I mentioned that. So biofilms aren't necessarily bad because we do have good bacteria in our body that have biofilms and those are good. But when Lyme um, ha uh, creates biofilms in our body, they use these biofilms to disintegrate our tissues so that they can feed off of them, so that they can reproduce and use our immune system against us to protect themselves because that's what they want to do. They want to continue to live and grow and expand and they do that with biofilms. Um, and that's how they hide from our body's immune system and kind of like trick our immune system. The bacteria can live in heart tissue and cause heart problems, lungs, respiratory issues. The ones that live in the joints cause arthritis. I went over this, um, neurological issues, etc. Um, so I talked about how I was infected with some of these, some of, some of this Lyme 
<laughs> some of these Lyme co-infections. Um, some of them are like, like the tests, like there's, there's different parts of this test. So like they, they talk about how like the, the biggest one that I have, the one that apparently I have the most like count of is the Bergdorferi, um, A and B, I guess. And then the other two, the Bartonella, Borrelia, and Ehrli eh, um, Ehrlichia, those ones are in very small amounts. So that kind of like leads me into like um, what I was talking about, what, I, what, what I'm about to talk about, and that is some strains will dominate the other out of the body if they both rely on the same resources. Some will work together and create synergy, enhancing their negative impact on the body and forming symptoms together that they may not have formed alone. So like potentially these these other three um, co-infections of Lyme that I have, um, they either, maybe they're new, maybe I just got them. Maybe like I got bit by like a mosquito and like I, they're, they're just starting out. Or maybe these other two similar strains of Bergdorferi um, like just are dominating the other, the other strains. Um, so that's potential. And the thing is, is like, there's like two Bergdorferi, there's like A and B or whatever. So, um, they could be working together to like protect themselves and working in a symbiotic relationship that's helping each other and not helping me. So these are just ideas, um, to like think about when, when we're talking about Lyme. It's definitely like a new avenue of knowledge and awareness things that I am not qualified for, but, um, very good book. Um, so the good news is, is that certain herbs and supplements can produce beneficial synergies as well, you know, so, um, they, like, different herbs can work together to create even more beneficial impact against Lyme co-infections. Um, Nonetheless, like these harmful bacteria taxes the immune system, impairing its ability to protect the body um, against other threats, weakening integrity over time. That's kind of like the main thing that I want to like express is like, even though a lot of people have this and a lot of it goes unnoticed by doctors and doctors, I don't know why doctors don't recognize this, like, um, maybe because it's just so unpredictable and it's so difficult to um, heal from or to treat or you know maybe doctors just don't don't know about it like maybe it's just not taught in our schools like that goes back to the whole institutional corruption like the pharmaceutical industry is not going to make any money if people get healthy so why not just you know not talk about Lyme um, Lyme could be the common denominator creating all these unhealthy things that people are suffering from today and if we could just focus on it and create like defenses against it maybe people would be healthier I don't know I'm not a scientist but definitely a something to think about but um yeah it does weaken the immune system over time um elimination of any Lyme and co-infections should be a priority to all humans, especially those with compromised immune systems. Anyways, that is my personal belief about it. Um, if you want to be healthy, like, the least you can do is educate yourself on Lyme because uh, you could have it. You could be sitting there and you could be having Lyme and that could be causing your high blood pressure. It could be causing your digestive issues, like, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, so, like, I, I w like, the reason why I got tested was because, like, I know that I'm not like the healthiest person that I could be and I wanted to have an idea of where to start so these tests have been like really helpful and it's not these Lyme this Lyme test was not the only test that I took but I'll go over them in, in another in another like video okay so um Lyme is very widespread. According to the book, most people already have a strain or will have a strain at one point, 
at some point in their life. And once it establishes residency in the body, it takes a lot of effort to eliminate. Successful Lyme protocols often take um, 12 months or longer depending on certain factors. So constant pressure on the bacteria is necessary while also repairing the damage already done by the bacteria. Again, the bacteria tax the body of protection, making it weaker over time. So um, thankfully, this, this book, again, um, it's called Healing Lyme by Stephen Harrod Burn, Burner. There you go. You can look at that. Read it backwards. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but it's really helpful. Super helpful. So it goes over. It has a, pro, it has a core protocol. Let's see if I wrote it down. You should definitely, like, if you want to do this protocol, you should definitely get this book. Um, in whatever version is comfortable for you. Um, but they have a core protocol. Um, and I, I like copied it all cause I have to give this book back to my landlord tomorrow. But, um, um, they have a core protocol and it, if you don't understand, like it's, it's very, it's, this book is very, um, is, is kind of like for the academic community, but anybody can read it. There are just parts of the book that you probably won't get unless like your like a chemistry major or understand anatomy and chemistry primarily um and I don't so there's a lot of things in this book that I skipped but I could still like generally follow it um and I think you know if you have a basic education that you'll be able to follow it regardless but generally the only thing that really matters is the core protocol and then after that they have like other things later on that you can like look at and be like, okay, do you, if you, if you have these symptoms on top of knowing that you have Lyme, um, then you can like up the dosage on this herb and then you can like use any one of these herbs. So that's what they have, which was, which is awesome. So they go through the, um, the core protocol and it talks about, um, endothelial protection, cytokine remodulation, collagen protection, immune remodulation, and antispiroketal. Um, and so it hits all of those areas that are important to protect the body and to repair the damage and to put stress on the organisms. So, um, it actually isn't a lot of, uh, it isn't a huge list of herbs and you can also like make these tinctures yourself. You can buy the herbs yourself and make the tinctures to make it as cost effective as possible because if you were to do this, it would be like a year doing this for a year so so yeah they have they list Japanese knotweed Chinese skullcap vitamin C selenium echinacea hyalur hyaluronic acid um, some other taxonomic names cordyceps with omnia somnifera which is ashwagandha um, Siberian ginseng and some other ones and then you know after you go that's the core protocol and then after you do that you can like choose other things I chose memory and cognitive dif um, dysfunction I've had brain fog for many years and um, I've I started having like issues with like memory and like not thinking clearly so I started um, I've been actually starting um, t started taking uh, adaptogens and I'm feeling so much better like I can think more clearly and I'm just feeling like better overall. Um, like, and my stress level is like much more manageable. Um, I definitely like them. And then some of those adaptogens are like listed in here as well. So, um, so yeah, you can go through the list. Like they have protocol for like, ang if you have anxiety, even extreme fear, um, uh, buzzing electric feelings in the nerves, uh, what else do they have? Uh, anything involving the eyes, sleep dis disturbances, like, so they just, like, go through it, and, like, you can look at it, and it, it just talks about all the different herbs and things that you can take to take control of your health, and I think that's really important anyways. Um, what else did I have written down? Oh, no, those are just books that they recommend. Um, I wanted to look at this. What does it say? Reading this book has opened my mind to understand that diseases are not what the public really thinks. Diseases are a collection of symptoms. 
in some cases, the same bacteria or parasite can cause different symptoms or diseases in different people as they adapt to new hosts. So yeah, we went over that, but um, that's super important. Like these, these little creatures, these organisms potentially could have sentience and like think for themselves. Which is kind of interesting and awesome, like it's some, something that I can definitely believe. And I actually tried to talk to mine and I was like, hey guys, like can you just be a part of my body and not cause immune issues? Because I'm going to start taking this product protocol and if like you're not a part of my body, you're going to get exterminated. So, yeah, so I wanted to read this little thing. Okay, so 40 years experience as a bacterial genetic geneticist has taught me that bacteria possess many cognitive, computational, and evolutionary capabilities unimaginable in the first six decades of the 20th century. Yep. I just wanted to, like, to mention that, like, they're smart little buggers, um, and they adapt really well. They're working all the time, and working, um, against our immune system, and our immune system is being really taxed about it, so, yeah, healing line. It's kind of worth it. So, like, now, like, just at this point in my life, like, I've just wanted to be healthier, so learning that I have Lyme co-infections has like you know opened my mind and um helped me just decide where i wanted to put my priorities so um i have a lot of the i have a lyme protocol actually from a holistic center that i went to in um florida so they have a lyme protocol um and i actually have to pick that up from the post office i think it arrived the other day so i need to go grab that and then i have a bunch of like supplements and little things to take and then i have the information that i learned from this book i'm probably going to pick up some of the herbs in this book as well and then just 12 months like it's um you know how much do you care about your health right i mean it doesn't like Terrible health doesn't really normally happen overnight. It's something that happens over years, which is why, like, you know, diet is so important to me. Like, um, what you put in your body, like, you're directly exposing your immune system to. So it's super important, you know, what you put in your body. Vaccines, pharmaceutical drugs, um, chemicals that you use in your house, um, the food that you eat, the water that you drink, all of these things matter. And all of these things have a good impact or a bad impact on your health. So, yeah, anyways, that's why it's important to me, my health. Mm. <clears throat> okay, so last questions. Um, was it easy to read? <clears throat> As I said, like, this book is kind of for the I mean like anybody can read it. it it does have a lot of things for the academic community so people who are already familiar with chemistry and um other science related to this field of interest um but there's a lot of it there's there's a lot of the book that I found very useful and helpful and like going to school now and and taking all these science classes I'm able to follow this and I might not have had I not gone to all of these like classes within the last couple years so I think like those classes really helped me be able to grasp more information like the kind of information that's in this book but um yeah so how useful is this information I think it's very useful um I honestly haven't looked at other sources of information. Oops, hold on. Blip. Okay. So, I actually haven't really looked for um, information um, in other places um, involving Lyme. So, like... So I, I, I don't know how, like, I can't, I can't compare the information in this book to other, other places because, like, this is, like, the only literature that I've actually read on Lyme, um, on Lyme disease. Uh, I mean, I've read, like, articles and stuff and, like, listened to testimonials of other people who have, like, healed their Lyme and, like, da 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 but uh, it sounds like this guy really knows what he's talking about and he's really open-minded and very honest and transparent and I like that and that makes a very trusting researcher 
Um, it's, it's really important to, like... It's important to have like it's important to put your trust in people that have an open mind and are willing to admit that they don't know everything so like that this author like really like helps and i'm going to show the book again healing lime co-infections natural healing of lime bore borreliosis and the co-infections chlamydia and spotted fever rickett rickettsiosis so apparently like there's so many different um, like co-infections of Lyme and I guess chlamydia is very closely related to it so like some of the stuff in this book can I uh, like I guess heal that as well um, I am not positive for chlamydia so <laughs> but if I was I would definitely look into this because they had that but I skipped that chapter because uh, it's unnecessary for me but um, how so how useful is this info I think it's really in I think it's really an informative book so if you can find it like on like an audio version to listen to it or just like um just like an online version that you can just read at your leisure like I think it's totally worth it that is if you care about your health and you really want to know the truth um and you're like willing to go the distance um because the symptoms that you have today like could be due to Lyme um like the line that I have in my body, I could have gotten when I was a child. And, like, because, like, I haven't had, like, I, I've gone out into the wilderness, like, I'm around bugs all the time, like, um, in the woods and such, and, like, who knows when I got it. Like, like, you don't necessarily have to have, like, terrible symptoms when you get Lyme. Like, your body, like, your, your body might, like, suppress those symptoms, or it just might be just so, um you know, Lyme can adapt so well that maybe it, it, it has come, it has adapted to become more stealthy so that we don't notice it. And apparently there are other ways that Lyme can be transferred sexually. Who knows? Like I could have had a sexual partner that gave me Lyme. Um, there are so many ways that Lyme can actually be transferred, not just with bites from insects, according to this book. Anyways, um, yeah, I, I really like this book. It also talks about how, um, like, you know, how the bacteria that we know as Lyme, like, you know, how it used to live before humans colonized North America, like, how, how, like, um, these, these bacteria were only found in, like, animals, and then, you know, once humans started clearing the way and getting, like, kind of pushing their way into the environment and, you know, sectioning off places and clearing out the biodiversity like these bacteria had to adapt and the next host that was best for them were was the dominant species which became humans so it jumped species apparently so uh yeah so uh yep i got a lot of value from this book i definitely recommend it to people who care about their health and who have the things that i talked about like the symptoms that you could have because these these could be exact it, the, like the symptoms that people have today like with cancer diabetes heart disease um neurological diseases alzheimer's crohn's disease all of these things could have an origin with lyme lyme could be the origin of these diseases but if anything if you have lyme um lyme is definitely not making any of these diseases better and actually taxing the immune system more so anyways that's all I wanted to talk about today and get that out of the way. So, um, I want to talk about these, I want, I have so much that I want to talk about. So I'm probably going to be doing, <clears throat> probably going to be like doing it every week, preferably at the beginning of the week. I pref like, I just like procrastinated so much. So sometime like maybe in the morning, I I like am more of a morning person, but we'll see. Um, if you want to hear me talk more uh, about all this stuff, academics and all these subjects um, of school and the things that I read, um, check out my TikTok or my Instagram because I will post when I go live on there. And then I will be uploading this to YouTube because, um, yeah, I think this information is really important. I think people should know about it. So, um, yeah, 
give it a like over there if you found any value in this and thank you so much for um sticking around and listening to this and i will see you next time and my voice is dying so <laughs> cmap out live long and prosper